Today was back day at the gym, and my two favorite days of the week in terms of exercise are leg day and back day. So yeah, I feel great. And that's why I want to present to you three impossible looking integrals. Yes, they look absolutely ridiculous. But you can solve all of them using their common structure. Now, what do I mean by common structure? Well, you can generalize them as integrals i over symmetric intervals from negative to positive a of functions f of x divided by 1 plus some other constant c to the g of x dx. And you see the functions f of x here are all even functions, while g of x is always going to be an odd function. So this kind of structure introduces some nice symmetry that we can exploit to solve these kind of impossible looking integral in seconds and impress everyone as a party trick. Now, of course, to show off this party trick, you're going to have to be invited to a party. But I think that's highly unlikely because, well, you're watching nerdy math content at this late hour. And you're probably going to binge watch some more math content from Michael Penn, old flammable maths videos, 3 blue, 1 brown, possibly more maths 505 videos. Yeah, I don't think any of us are getting invited to any parties for the, for the foreseeable future. But you know what? Fuck parties. Who cares? We're interested in doing cool mathematics and building muscle. So let me just rewrite this structure integral from negative to positive a of even function f of x divided by 1 plus c to the odd function g of x dx. Now to solve the general case, let's perform a transformation from the x realm to the negative x realm. And that of course takes dx to the negative dx realm. And this implies that I can now be written as an integral from positive a to negative a of f of negative x divided by 1 plus c to the g of negative x, negative dx. Now, if we switch up the limits of integration, we get once again an integral from negative to positive a of f of x because f is even divided by 1 plus c to the negative g of x because g is an odd function, and we got rid of the negative sign thanks to the extra negative sign because of the switch up of limits. So that means we have two structures for the integral i. And they look identical except for the one in blue having this negative g of x as the exponent of c. Okay, so to turn this integral in blue to another structure that has exactly the same denominator, I should expand using c to the g of x, right? So just multiplying that upstairs and downstairs. That gives me the integral from negative a to positive a of c to the g of x times f of x divided by 1 plus c to the g of x dx. Okay, cool. So writing out this structure and the structure that we started off with, that was integral from negative to positive a, of f of x dx divided by 1 plus c to the g of x. Both these structures represent exactly the same integral, so let's add, add them up. So this implies that 2i equals the integral from negative a to positive a, where we invoke the linearity of the integration operator, of course. We have this common denominator of 1 plus c to the g of x. And in the numerator, we can factor out f of x and we're left with 1 plus c to the g of x, which is pretty convenient, right? Because we can cancel it out. So we're left with i being equal to 1 half of the integral from negative to positive a of f of x dx. And of course, f of x is an even function, so that means instead of integrating from negative to positive a, just integrate from 0 to a and double the result. So this implies that that horrible looking structure just equals the integral from 0 to a of the function in the numerator f of x. So let's try this out on the integrals we wrote out at the beginning. Starting off with this horrible looking cosine integral, we have the required structure. We have an even function in the numerator divided by 1 plus e, a constant to an odd function 1 by x. 
So we can write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the cosine of x dx. And that gives us the sine of x, limits being 0 and pi by 2. Sine pi by 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So that means this integral equals 1. Okay, cool. Now what about the other integral we wrote out? That was an integral from negative 1 to positive 1 of x squared dx divided by 1 plus pi to the sine of x. And yeah, I know, that looks kind of funny. It's a pretty funny looking integral if you ask me. Anyway, this is just a fancy way of writing the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. And this, of course, is 1 third of x cubed, 0, 1. So you have 1 by 3. That's what the second integral equals. Now, the third integral is actually an integral from the 2020 Berkeley Math Tournament. Integral from, oh, wait a second. What the hell? Negative to positive infinity of 2020 to the negative absolute value x divided by 1 plus 5 to the inverse sine of sine to the fifth power of x dx. So in the numerator, we have this function 2020 to the absolute value of x. So replacing x by negative x does not change a single thing. Okay, so this is your even function f of x. Now, what about the thing in the denominator? Inverse sine of sine to the fifth power of negative x would be sine is an odd function and you're raising it to an odd power. So yeah, that's still odd. You have si uh, inverse sine of negative sine to the fifth power of x. Inverse sine itself is an odd function. So we have inverse sine of sine to the fifth power of x again. Okay, cool. So again, this is the required structure. We have i being equal to the integral from zero to infinity of 2020 to the negative x, where we've ditched the absolute value because, well, zero to infinity. Okay, so this sorts out to 2020 to the negative x divided by the logarithm of the base and negative sign because of the negative x. Okay, limits being zero and infinity. So as x approaches infinity, this thing in the numerator will give you a zero. And as x approaches zero, you have a one divided by log 2020. Again, terribly sorry about that. So you have two negatives canceling out and that means the Berkeley integral that we have equals positive one by log 2020. Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked the integration party trick. Be sure to try it out on your friends and, you know, scare people with it. Like, oh, here's an integral. Ah, it's just equal to one. How do you do that? And then you can, of course, impress them. But, of course, we don't give a fuck about impressing anyone. We're here to do really cool math because we love it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. See you next time.